Our paper in IJCP is a review of lone atrial fibrillation which may develop in a subset of patients not older than 60 years with no evidence of associated cardiopulmonary or other comorbid disease, including hypertension. The overall incidence of atrial fibrillation remarkably increases with age, but the true incidence of low natural fibrillation is unknown and it widely varies in published reports depending on the criteria used in a given study. In general, atrial fibrillation is a major cause of significant cardiovascular morbidity and mortality, primarily due to ischemic stroke and congestive heart failure, but importantly, the risk of arrhythmia-related complications is strongly influenced by the patient's age and underlying comorbid disease. And from that point of view, the so-called low natural fibrillation should certainly bear a favorable long-term prognosis. In clinical practice, atrial fibrillation is commonly associated with structural heart disease. Other well-defined risk factors for atrial fibrillation include advanced age, hypertension, diabetes and thyroid disease, and therefore, low natural fibrillation is essentially a diagnosis of exclusion which should be made only after a detailed assessment. However, the perception of what is a truly low atrial fibrillation has been changing constantly. Increasing evidence suggests there are distinct atrial abnormalities in otherwise healthy patients which could not be attributed solely to tachycardia-induced remodeling. An increasing number of novel risk factors for atrial fibrillation, including obesity, metabolic syndrome and many others, have been recognized, thus raising a question of whether lone atrial fibrillation does exist at all. Obviously, the entity of apparently lone atrial fibrillation presently comprises rather heterogeneous subsets of atrial fibrillation patients who should not be classified a priori as having a benign rhythm disorder. In our review, we summarize the current knowledge of low natural fibrillation and outline the emerging insights into its pathophysiology, emphasizing that an accurate recognition of a truly low natural fibrillation, if any, would have important implications, especially for stroke risk stratification and stroke prevention strategies in such patients. Thank you.